Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at risk and risk premium. And specifically to measure risk and risk premium, we're going to look at the variance and standard deviation. These topics are covered on the CPA exam as well as the CFA exam. Also, if you're taking in essentials or principles of investment, graduate or undergraduate. As always, I'm going to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people and connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to complement and supplement your accounting courses, your finance courses, as well as your professional certifications. Any investment you undertake comes with risk, comes with uncertainty about the future holding period return. What does it mean future holding period? It means your future rate of return is uncertain. And there are many reasons why that's uncertain. It could be from macroeconomics fluctuation. The economy is not doing well. You have no control over that. Maybe changes in your industries. Maybe changes at, that are firm specific unexpected development at your company maybe, maybe a competitor came came with a new product there's always risk when you make an investment also there are unknown reasons simply put you undertake an investment you don't do well sometimes there is no specific explanation for that but from a finance perspective what we can do we can try to measure risk by using scenario analysis and probability distribution so how to measure risk this is basically the idea of what we are doing today so we attempt to measure risk by asking ourselves two couple questions. Basically, what is the holding period return for this investment? So basically, what is the holding period return? It means how much returns can we earn on this investment and how likely are they? So basically, we have to kind of guess different type of returns under different scenarios. So basically, what we have to do is we have to list the possible economic outcome or scenarios and specify the probability for each scenario and the holding period return for the asset assuming given this scenario. So this approach called the scenario analysis. So how, how does it work? It's pretty straightforward. For example, here, let's take a look at this example. We're going to be assuming four scenarios. We're going to have a severe recession. We're going to have a mild recession. We're going to have a normal growth and we're going to have a boom. What are the probability of those events happening? Having a severe recession is 5%. Mild recession, 25%. Normal growth is 40%. And a boom is 30%. Always add up your probabilities. Your probabilities should always add up to 100%. Now we have to guess or estimate our holding period that are possible given the, given the different scenarios. In a severe recession, we might have a holding period return of negative 37%. Now, if you don't know how to compute the holding period return, please go to the prior session because I did show you how to compute this. Um, in a mild recession, we could have 11, a negative 11%. Normal growth, we could have a positive 14. In a boom, if everything goes well and the economy is booming, our investment should earn 30%. So basically what we did is we answered those two questions. How likely are they? And what's the holding period? Now, now, once we have this information, the probability we're going to have a probability distribution that's going to let us derive, find out the measurement for both the reward and the risk of the investment. Basically, the reward and the risk of the investments are called, especially the reward, is called the expected return. Basically, how much are we expected to earn from this investment, giving the probabilities. This is what we're looking for. The expected return is also called the mean of the distribution of the holding period rate, and it's often referred to as the mean return. So I'm going to be referring, referring, referring to it as the mean return. And how do we compute the mean return? This is the formula. Basically, it's the sum of the probability times the return. What does that mean? We have the probabilities, 5%. We have the return, the holding period return, negative 37. So if that happened, if we multiply the probability by the holding period return, we're going to get negative 1.85. Under the mild recession, we'll do the same thing, 25% times the, the return, two point, negative 2.75. Normal growth, 40% probability times 14%, 5.60. And a boom, 
30% probability and we're going to get 30% return, expected return, 9%. Now, when we add up all these returns, we're going to get, when we net them out, we're going to get what's called the expected return or the mean return. So the mean return, basically, what does that mean? It means we expect, given the different probabilities, we expect to earn 10%. Is this accurate? Absolutely not. We need to learn a little bit more about this expected return. What do we want to learn about? We want to learn about the variability of it because there's going to be, well, what does that mean? It means if we have a boom, we could go up to 30%. You know, what's the difference between 30 and 10%? That's that's a variance of 20, 20 percentage. So what we need to do is, because there's a risk of the invest to the investment, the actual return may be a lot more or a lot less. So we don't know. We expect the 10%. So if the boom materializes, the return will be better, which is 30%. But in a severe recession, the return will be negative 37. Now, what we need to know, we need to know, we need to learn a little bit more. We need to quantify this uncertainty this spread between from from the mean to the other returns giving the probabilities so there's this is what's called the surprise return in any scenario is the difference between the actual return and the expected return so the surprise return is we expected 10 what was the actual okay so this to summarize uncertainty with a single number we're going to compute something called the variance and the variance it's going to help us measure this uncertainty and we're going to and the variance as the expected value of the square deviation from the mean so the expected square devi the expected square surprise across different scenarios how do we compute the variance let's look at the formula first and we're going to compute it it's pretty straightforward it's the sum of uh, the probabilities times the the return given a scenario minus the expected return, the expected return for us is 10% raised to the second power. Okay, and the sum of all of those probabilities. Simply put, let's take a look at let's take a look at it here. We already did we already looked at the probabilities, at the holding period return, at the expected return. Now what we need to find out is the deviation. And what is the deviation? The deviation is the range, is the range from the mean return. Let's let me show you what do I mean by the what by the deviation so the expected return is 10 percent this is the expected return notice here in a severe recession we could go down to negative 37 percent so what is the deviation well the deviation is 47 negative 47 and this is what we mean by the deviation negative 47 under a mild recession, we could be standing at negative 11. Negative 11. So what's the difference between 10 and negative 11? That's negative 21. That's negative 21. Also, the normal growth, again, we'll do the same thing. It's 14%. That's 4. The deviation is 4. And under the boom, we're going to have 30%. And that's... The deviation is 20 so i want you to see how what what do i mean by the deviation so what you do is you compute the deviation or the or the range the range how much does it does it differ from the expected return basically then we compute the um the uh the squared or the variance the variance we're going to compute the variance and again how do we compute the variance using this formula right here so let's go ahead and look at the first example using this formula to see how we compute this so let's take a look at it okay so we're going to have the probability well we're going to have what are we going to have we're going to have the probability which is for the first one 0.05 and we're going to multiply this by the difference between the holding period return 37 minus the expected return the expected return is 10 again what are we going to get we're going to get negative 47 and we're going to square this and we're going to get 110.45 and we'll do the same thing for the mild recession the same thing for the normal and the boom and what we did is we add up all the variances and why did we do so we do so because we want to eliminate the negatives once we once we raise to the second power we eliminate the negative because when you multiply negative by negative negative 47 times multiply by negative 47 it's going to give you a positive number so that's the reason we compute the 
uh, the variance is to get rid of the negative because we're really concerned with this with the range with the spread okay so to give measure of risk this uh, risk the same dimension as expected return percentage we use the standard deviation now how do we compute the standard deviation because we looked at the variance the standard deviation is simply put is the square root of the variance so this is the variance all we're going to do is going to we're going to find the square root and this is sigma so the standard deviation sigma is the square root of the uh, of the uh, of the of the variance and basically uh, what we did because we raised those to the second power you know what we do now is we reverse this we take the square root of it the square root of it so basically the standard deviation which is the me measure of disbursement is 18.63 now we're going to talk a few things about the standard deviation generally speaking giving the same expected return the larger the standard deviation, the more risk there is for the portfolio or for that investment. Standard deviation means there's more variances in the data. The more variances in the data, the riskier the, the riskier is the problem. Let me give you a simple example, like is an example that you can maybe uh, you can maybe relate to, to to understand this concept. Let's assume I have two classes. I have two classes, class A and class B. And the average score, the average score, the average score for class A is 75, and the average for class B is 75. If that's all the information that you know, you would say this both classes have the same average. Now let's assume I ask you to do the following. Um, or let's yeah, let's assume I ask you to do the following. So I pulled I pulled the first first exam from class A, and the score was seventy. I pulled the first test randomly, and it, the score was seventy. I pulled the second test from class A, the score was eighty. I pulled the third test from class A, the score was seventy three. I pulled the fourth exam, the score was eighty six. I pulled the fifth exam, the score was seventy two. I pulled the sixth exam and the score was, the score was, uh, let's assume, 88. Now, if I ask you to pull the seventh exam, or if I ask you to guess, would the seventh exam most likely be in class A? And I bet you're going to say something between 70 to 80 percent, because most of them, they're between, you know, do we have this 86 but we have 70 so it's between 70 and 86 88 so it's ranging in that it's in that in that ballpark okay if you want to guess if i ask you to guess let me go to class b i'm gonna do the same thing for class b so randomly i pulled the first test from class b and the score was 20. i pulled the second test from class b the score was 100. i pulled the third test randomly from class b and the score was 60. I pulled the fourth test, it was 90. The fifth test was 75. Now, if let's, that's five, let's pull one more, it was 40. If I ask you to pull the seventh, or guess, the seventh test in class B, how are you, are you more comfortable guessing class A, the seventh test, or class B? And hopefully, you are more comfortable guessing the seventh grade for class A. Why? Because it seems, based on what we have, based on the variance in the grade, the grade are centered around 75. The average is 75, but the grades are centered around 75. For class, for class B, the average is the same at 75. However, some students are getting 20, some students are getting 100, so there's wide dispersion. So the to guess class B exam, you're going to have, if, you, if we compute the standard deviation, the standard, if we compute the standard deviation for class B, if we compute the standard deviation, I could assure you the standard deviation is higher than the standard deviation in class A. So class A will be lower. Therefore, guessing the seventh grade will be riskier for class B than class A, although they both have the same average. So that's the point of computing the standard deviation is the the larger the standard deviation generally speaking the more risk there is again the standard deviation works best when we have the same expected expected return which is 
10%, the same average grade, what I was talking about, 75. Now, why are we doing all of this? The reason we're doing all of this, because in the next session, we're going to be looking at, the, we're going to be using the normal distribution bell curve to explain a little bit more about the average return, the mean, and the standard deviation. But first, I wanted to make sure you understand how we came up with the standard deviation and what does it mean? It measures the variability in the data. And more, variab more variability there is, if a stock goes up, up and down, swing widely from day to day, it's going to be riskier than a stock that doesn't move too much. But this is what we're going to be talking about next session, but I want to make sure you know what, how we compute the standard deviation and what a standard deviation is. In the next session, we would look, we would measure risk looking at the normal distribution. As always, I'm going to ask you to like this recording and share it. If you do like it, then share it. And obviously, if you're listening that far, you must have liked what I said. Please share it. Put it in playlist and don't forget to visit my website farhatlectures.com for additional resources in order to succeed in your education, professional certification, and exams. Good luck and study hard.